So I am going to call the Capital Improvement Planning Committee meeting to order uh, at 5.01 p.m. tonight. Um, let's see, we have a couple things that we need to go over. Um, the first thing I wanted to do was just uh, uh, <clears throat> review the minutes from the last time that we met. Um, we did meet um, last week, but uh, we did not have a quorum, so uh, there were no motions or anything. So the minutes that we need to review are from the October 23rd, um, 2023 meeting. Um, so um, we should all have a copy here. Um, I make a motion that we approve them as presented. Thank right. you for doing them, Mark. Oh, these were Charles, yeah, uh, or Chuck, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, do we have a second? Second. All right. Um, any discussion on the minutes? All right. Uh, all those in favor? Carolyn, yes, I. Carrie Edgels, yes. Okay. Uh, well, actually, we, I don't. I don't know if we need to. Denise Mason, I. Yeah. We don't need to do a roll call. A roll call, but okay, great. Looks like that's unanimous. All right, and then um, we have a few people here to uh, help us walk through some of the requests. So um, if we could all in our packet go to the Leary lot first, um, why don't we have uh, Chris discuss the uh, Leary lot capital expenditure request? Thank you for having me this evening. Um, I don't think I've met all of you. My name is Chris Nolan, and I'm the assistant town administrator. Um, and I have been kind of spearheading on the town's end this project, which is the development of the Leary lot at 59 North Main Street. It was purchased by the town in the year of 1996 for the purpose of building a municipal parking lot. We don't have one of those yet. So that's been kind of my mission this year is to get on that to make sure that we're moving along. Uh, I've been working with a great team. We've got uh, Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design as our lead architect. He's been adapting this design and making modifications as requested. I've also been working with consultants John Tortelot and David Pomerantz from Rivermore Energy um, and with a number of other stakeholders involved. Uh, we've been making a good amount of progress. Um, and Specifically, the reason I'm in front of you tonight is because uh, we have received a federal grant and it's not entirely uh, something that we are prepared to speak publicly on at the moment, but it is public knowledge that we received 2.46 million roughly from the federal CFI charging and fueling infrastructure grant as part of the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, that is fantastic news for this project. It means that we essentially are a lot more expanded in what we can actually take on. Um, and the green infrastructure that we've included in partnership with the MVP program as well uh, is is really going to be a game changer for this lot. And it's, it's really a model parking lot for a small town center. Um, so a conundrum that we've come across is that we had initially set aside about $495,000 from ARPA funds to pay for this lot. And that was going to be the bulk of the cost with the level three charging stations that are funded by this federal grant. Um, the cost is going to be a lot higher and most of it is going to be covered by the grant. Uh, however, there is a 20% grant match, which we have not gotten clear indication on whether ARPA funds are eligible for that portion because they are also considered federal funds. So with that being said, and I know I think Casey can provide a better explanation of what this alternative plan might be. Um, there were going to be, a, there was going to be a request for storm damage funding from capital um to take care of some of the roads that we have outstanding damage on from the july 2023 storms um and essentially what we might end up requesting depending on the guidance that i'm still awaiting from the federal government uh, we might end up requesting that the roads be funded through arpa instead and we shift the funding for this leary lot project over to capital stabilization um so with that being said this design is 
subject to a couple more tweaks. It's not entirely final yet. Um, we're waiting on the federal grant document before we can get this project bid ready and send it out for construction. Um, however, um, this is the gist of what you're going to be seeing, give or take a couple of items. I'm going to explain that. And I'll explain the, the flip between ARPA in a few minutes. But okay. if you want to explain basically the idea of the parking lot so people get a picture of it. Sure. So, a picture of it. so you'll see in front of you, there's a there's a handout. It's the, the most recent iteration of uh, Berkshire Design's work on this concept for the Leary lot. It has, I the, the exact number escapes me right now, unfortunately, but it's between 55 and 60 parking spaces. 56, I think. 56. So. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, so it's about 56 parking spaces, um, some of which are designated for the EV chargers, of which there are going to be uh, two level two charging stations and two level three charging stations, uh, in addition to the level two that already exists near the entrance, which is going to stay. So the level three chargers, the reason they are such a game changer is because those are chargers that are in very short supply that can charge an EV car within 30 minutes. Um, it's a fantastic game changer for this downtown South Deerfield economy. It's going to bring people to charge their vehicles that would otherwise not be going anywhere near the downtown if they're coming off of 91 on long haul trips or if they're from the area uh, doing business in town, it's going to be the place that people will go if they want their car charged quickly. So I'm very passionate about those clearly. Um, the level three chargers are going to be expensive, but they are going to be covered mostly by the federal grants. Um, and I want to emphasize that the numbers that I included in the application are very preliminary for what the annual upkeep of those will be. Uh, I, I, I will admit that there is going to be funding that is required to pay the electrical bills that will be generated by these fast chargers. Uh, however, uh, I am confident that we have the capacity within our solar net metering to make it so that is very much minimized, if not erased. Um, so just to be on the safe side, my my guess was what I put in the application as to what the annual upkeep of these chargers will be. Um, however, um, that is essentially a spitball number. There, there. I, I, I don't have much in terms of actual estimates that I can back up with data. So... Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Well, I do. Well, one comment. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that you can't match federal with federal. So I think that's a really good idea to switch that. I mean, I don't know if that's true in this situation. Second thing is at a planning. Mm -hmm. Not me. What's going on? Uh, what's it going to be? Yeah. Well, you just got to pick that. <laughs> That's me. Something the expert is here. <laughs> we just have to kick it. You got to pick the cord every once in a while to get it to stop pissing. <laughs> so the second thing at our planning board meeting the other night, um, Greg Franceschi had mentioned something. I don't know if, if you heard that. Yes. About the bikes. And he, he, he was he was concerned that people riding their bikes and might get hit by a car. So. Yes, uh, thank you for the question. I was in touch with Greg this morning. Um, he had a suggestion about alternative placement of the of the bike rack. Um, there are two bike racks currently planned for, um, you can see towards the eastern side of the lot next to the picnic tables. Um, that's something that I'm going to take up with the architect. I don't think that would be a major change. I, I, I think it could be a fairly minor adjustment if, if that's the direction that we're going. Um, but yeah, that's that that seems doable at first glance to me. One last one last question. So you said it'll be really great for people to come in off the highway and get a fast charge, but how will they know that they're there? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I think long term, I would love to see some signs invested in um, to, to make sure people are aware. Um, but we're also going to make sure that they're look upable online, for lack of a better term, um, where people who are searching for chargers will see that we have some very high functioning fast chargers right here in downtown South Deerfield. And when they're here, they might want to grab lunch and a coffee. 
or Thanks, visit Chris. Um, visit Berkshire Brew. I think this is going to be a wonderful, and it will be a game changer. Absolutely. Um, for our downtown, it's very exciting. Um, Chris, I know you've been working on this, and I harassed you already last night. But um, do you have any any indication from a governor's office or Markey's office or anybody when we're going to hear from this about this? So I have another webinar next week that's supposed to be one of the additional preliminary steps before we start receiving the agreements. Um, however, I, I still have not gotten a, a pinpointed date yet of of how long we're going to be waiting here. And we, we are admittedly getting antsy because we're starting to run up against uh, the prime of construction bidding season. So um, the sooner the better on this from, from all of our perspective, and I hope to have better news on that soon. Um is there any possibility you can um, we can talk to our lawyers and see if there's a way that we could bid this out? So we aren't able to uh, expend any money until uh, yeah. after we have the the agreement, or they are, they won't reimburse any costs that were that were incurred before okay. the agreement is signed. All right, thanks. Sure. So um, I see here that the charging costs are between 80 and 100,000 per year. Are yes. We, are we not charging for this? Uh we will be charging. Um there's going to be a user rate on the chargers. Um what it will be is up for us to decide. Um I think we're going to need a lot better math than what I kind of spitballed for that number right there based on what similar projects have incurred that I could find as public info. Um however, I would say uh, they will likely be more expensive than the the level two chargers, just because people will want will expect people to pay more for a faster product, um, if yeah. that makes sense. So um, that's that's going to have to be factored in to help minimize the cost for us to to front. Okay, so under the annual increase in operating cost, then is the are, are you just representing what the actual operating cost is, but not not the revenue offsets? Correct. Okay. All right. That that was essentially my worst case scenario number of what I can imagine if we didn't have any revenue to offset that, um, just to be as transparent as possible. Okay. Because uh, you know, every municipality that 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 I know of that that offers these, you know, you have to you have to pay to charge. So right. Okay. The other question I had was, uh, if we need to pay twenty percent of this, I think that um, the number was here, uh, four hundred ninety two thousand. I think was the. 20% number of what the town would have to kick in. That sounds correct. How much economic activity do you think that this project would generate? Uh, I think that's a little hard to quantify right now, um, but I think long-term it could definitely pay for itself in terms of that cost. Um, I, I don't know what kind of time period we would be meaning for that, but I, I think through collaboration with the local businesses in town who are really excited for this project and the additional traffic that it's going to generate to to them um, and the additional tax revenue from businesses doing well, I think I, I think it will pay for itself over time. Um, our meals tax, um, we're probably going to increase our meals tax. And I, I would assume we could track it through the meals tax is a giant would be a giant jump. And I, I again, we're all only guesstimating, but I would say that this would pay for itself that our investment match investment um, easily within five years. Because if you take that money and say a hundred thousand a year, we would certainly be able to collect that in the meals tax, especially if we increased it under the um, new governor's new empowerment act that is going to be taking you know, hopefully be in place um, by July 1st. At the end of the session, it should be passed. So that gives us the option to increase it slightly. And um, and then you have just a giant jump in business for our, you know, you have Wolfies, you have Leo's, you have John, Johnny Pigs, you have the Berkshire Brew. There's going to be lots of opportunities for meals tax increase, I would think. Hey, Carolyn, I was interested um, how do we find out how much we're actually receiving for meals tax? Um, I have it right here. So the 2024 revenue for meals tax 
was, um, well, actually other excise. So this is room and meals. Uh, looks like it was 328,000. We have a breakdown of our- I don't have any. Okay, I was just yeah. curious about Treehouse and well, that was going to be my my next question because you know Deerfield's kind of in a unique position in the sense that we have two exits on ninety one, so people can come off, do whatever they want to do, and then hop right back on without you know um, the the same kind of travel that other towns have. But my concern is Treehouse already has chargers, so if people are going to get off the highway and park in the Leary lot, how many chargers are we going to have in the Leary lot under this plan? So altogether, including the one that's currently there, there will be 10 ports because there will be five stations total. Do we know what the expected like monthly revenue would be out of those? Or It's going to depend a lot on what kind of traffic they're generating. Um, going off of your point, I think that's a good question about Treehouse and per se competing with them. Um, Treehouse's chargers aren't able to charge a car in 30 minutes. So I think for they people looking for two. a quick... They have yeah, they have two. level two chargers. Um, yeah. So... Um, it's great that they offer that service and being a larger corporation, um, they are able to to offer that free of charge. Um, but if somebody who drives an electric vehicle is looking to get on, excuse me, get off the highway, uh, charge their car as quickly as possible and keep going, they're going to go right here when those are built. Well, well, possibly. I mean, um, going to Treehouse and I, I certainly wouldn't mind if I had a place like Treehouse to stop at, uh, you know, and sure. get a pizza and some beers and stuff. But I'm, I'm wondering, like, how many people realistically would go to Wolfie's and um, Gianni Figs and Cheslux and some of the other areas that are around here? Um, and if they if they do do that, like, you know, I, I think it, it makes sense that it would generate some economic activity. It's just like close to a million of uh, half a million dollars over the course of three to five years, I think, is a stretch. Yeah, I would I would not commit it to to paying for itself in that amount of time. Um, I think that was that was an optimistic estimate that I appreciate. Um, but overall, I think I think it would take some time uh, to get a one hundred percent return on investment. But um, I think the the economic development benefit to the downtown area is uh, an additional benefit on top of what you, you know, might see. I from was just basing it packs. on um, UMass is the call. Uh, had done an economic um, multiplier effect report. Oh, they did. Okay. Um, on um, what was already happening, just generating from Treehouse, and if you use those kind of multipliers and and apply it to the Leary lot, you will. We it is it is a wonderful wonderful um, multiplier for us, and I don't think it's all that optimistic as a five year payback. Because you know you're going to generate revenue from the chargers too. I know that Chris wants to say that there's going to be a charge, but you know there are plenty of places when when we were coming when we went to Boston and back in Tim's car, there was uh, huge opportunities that you know I was not aware of as not an EV owner um, for. Um, the way it charges and and you do if you have electric car you want to go to a level three yeah you you don't want to you want to spend 15 minutes and and charge your car and that 15 minutes you can whip into Cheslix, you can whip into leo's and get takeout and then or visit berkshire brew for a half an hour and then come back you know whatever it's just you're going to find that this is going to be a driver for us downtown. And I'm so incredibly excited because it's a green space, but it's also, and it's our flood capacity. This is porous pavement, but it's, it's going to be so great with this grant. It's not going to be just a lovely green space. It's actually going to, it's going to drive us. I think. All right. And then the other question I had was, I, I don't know if it was Denise who asked, but someone had asked about how we can advertise this. Like, I know with the Tesla chargers, you can get your location published. Mm -hmm. um, have we looked into the different online systems that we can publish this in? And, you know, what's the process for like a municipality doing that? Do we, do we know what that looks like yet? Sure. That's a great question. So I do know that um, 
ChargePoint is the vendor that we are on contract with oh, to, okay. to do these projects. Um, I think they have their own app, actually. They have their own app, and I believe that they also, and I don't quote me on this, but I, I believe they also have their chargers replicated on some other just general EV charging maps. Um, the specifics I'm not aware of, but I, I do know that they do have a good mapping system of their own. And then um, is it possible to get like a uh, a sign on the highway, you know, for, for these at all? Have we looked into that? I, I think it should be. Um, I, that's definitely something I'm happy to talk to DOT about. Um, that's, that's presumably who we would be using for highway signage. Um, and then in terms of signs directing people once they get off the highway, how to get downtown, because there are a couple more steps involved um, than if they're just going to Yankee Candle or Treehouse per se. Um, I think that's definitely something that we could look into investing in. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a good point, too. Once you get off the highway, they might need a little handhold in getting to the delivery lot because it's tucked in. Sure. Um, and then for this 20%, so is the idea here that we would, if we can't, get funds for the match piece. Um, you know, this committee doesn't have to figure out what the funding source is, but it certainly helps for when we present to the select board and the finance committee. So would we be basically just kind of doing a swap where uh, we would use the ARPA funds and then the monies that come in from uh, the, what was, I don't know if I had the grant written down here that you talked about, um, but that grant source, could that be shifted over to something that ARPA was going to be, uh, ARPA funds were going to be allocated for? Yes, that is the plan. That's that's a very good way of describing it. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Did you have any, Karen? And uh, I, do, I do hope to have a better update with some better figures and ideas and federal guidance at that point before the end of your meeting season as we as we work on this uh capital plan going into town meeting um so again what i'm what i'm showing you tonight is very preliminary but i i just want to be fully upfront and transparent about what our plans are and what our request is likely going to be okay thank you chris. great thank you chris thanks yeah. chris. thank you all Hey, can I remind everybody when you speak, speak right into the microphone, because I actually do listen to some of these meetings online. If you're just sitting there talking, you can't hear. So, Thank you. I, I yeah. say this at every meeting. Carolyn right reminds everybody, the... too. I'm usually the annoying person in the background. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, but I, I honestly talk into it. Come on. I talk loud, too. You, people, people can hear. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Have That's a great night. Yeah, you too. Thank you Thanks. for staying and, and getting that done. Of thank course. You. Thank you. All right. Um, the next uh, capital request I want to uh, review is the capital request for uh, SCIM. So, Josh, do you have a moment to come up? And don't forget to talk into the mic. <laughs> And you have to introduce yourself. I have not taken it. No, I can't. Because you know no, what? Really um, a lot of people don't know. He you speaks yet. softly. <laughs> Am I that soft spoken? Yeah. Actually, you are soft. Much more soft spoken than yours, truly. Yes. So <laughs> the rest of us are. Pretty good. good evening, everybody. Uh, just introducing myself, Joshua Sparks. I'm the chief of South County EMS. Great, thank thank you for uh, for coming in. I think we have a few requests for scams. Uh, so for all of us who are going through our packet here, I think we've got the EMS station learning system, a replacement of a striker stretcher, and a stretcher power load. Um, I think that was it. Are you here to present on all three, or am I missing any? I have uh, four of these in front of me. Oh, four. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I have, I am, uh, to present on all four. Okay. Which one are we missing? So I have the power load system replacement, the striker stretcher, a, uh, that was in last week. So the striker stretcher and the yep. power load were in last week. Yep. Got those. Um, yep. and then 
the other two is the station alert system and the intercept vehicle, and that's in this week's packet. Oh, okay. And you'll find it under items and anticipated. Because oh, okay. I didn't get the updated ones until because the last two are oh, 24. Yeah, here it is. I'm sorry. Do you need me to print anything so everybody can look at it? Because I can go print. I just printed them for mine was Josh. super stuck together. So yeah, I've got the I've got I've got the the two for today, and then I've got the two from the last one. Um, I but if we need to get more copies, we can get yeah, more copies. Yeah, I'm I'm happy. I can go do it now. Oh, does does everyone, everyone have? There's not a copy in here. No, there's a copy in yours. You have everything. <laughs> Find it. I have the um. What do you have? I have the EMS oh, alert station. And so the, you have the two new ones. We don't have the old ones. I guess not. Okay. I I kept them all together. I don't know why I don't have it. I remember seeing it. Yeah. Uh, bear with us for just one second. Yeah. Sorry, Josh. Of course. You know the problem okay. is not right. so we're not organized. Twenty four hours. Or I'm not as organized. Mm -hmm. All right. Supposed to I will fix yours in a second. Uh, Okay. Do you want to talk to them about, Thank do you, you mind if I ask a question? No, go for it. Um, do you want to talk to them about the 224s while I get her the 25s? Um, so the... I'll yeah, that's great. The, that way I can go make sure she has a copy of what you need. Just... Oh, oh, sounds okay. great. Or, and, yeah. and so, Carrie, do you have everything? Yeah. And, oh, okay. Jeez. I'm the only one that does with that. It's around me. I'm special. Huh. I don't know what I have Maybe I put it in the stem folder instead of in the capital folder here. Oh, okay. You know what? Let me just easily check. Does everybody have the fiscal year 24 request for the ALS intercept vehicle? Yes. Yeah, yeah we could start talking about that. Why don't we go with the ALS intercept vehicle and the Alerting system. We have the alerting system first in our packet. So, okay, yeah. let's start that. Let's start with the alerting system. Uh, although it would dovetail nicely to talk about another electrical vehicle. Um, oh, but okay. Yeah. Uh, let's do station alerting. So, <clears throat> currently, the way that <clears throat> the ambulance crews at South County receive calls. Uh, is through the dispatch center run by the Massachusetts State Police out of their Shelburne Falls barracks. Uh, they do a great job up there. Uh, we've had great luck historically partnering with them. I've been up to meet with their staff. They're wonderful. <clears throat> the way that we receive the calls is through a paging system. We're currently using a much older analog paging system. There's been a, a upgrade to their equipment at that dispatch center, which transitions the paging system to a digital format. We have digital pagers expected, I believe a month ago, uh, which haven't arrived yet, uh, through uh, regional uh, acquisition uh, any day now. And that's great. The problem with that is these run off of an 800 megahertz uh, digital paging system, which is effective if you're out in the world. Uh, but these are notoriously difficult inside a built environment. So it's going to make us consider purchasing a station repeater system to make sure that we don't miss out on our calls. All of that, even if we pursued all of that, and we will, it's a very antiquated method of receiving notification of EMS calls. It's built on a very old technology platform. And I think if you are the state police and you are looking to work with a, a very large group of organizations across uh, a huge region, that's a really cost-effective and manageable way to approach it. What it doesn't do, though, is solve a lot of problems. It does create a couple of problems. So once again, I look forward to continuing with that because it's not going to cost us anything. In fact, when that goes live, uh, it's going to save our department money 
uh, as we no longer pay certain line items to support the old system. But I'd like to use it as a critical redundancy and rely primarily on a system which notifies not just a pager, but the building and the vehicles themselves. So this is useful in a number of instances. It allows, instead of me wearing a portable radio inside the station and hoping that I'm hearing things, and maybe we get the pager tone, maybe we don't, it changes it so that when our emergency call is dispatched to us, the building lights up. It, there's, there's an audio broadcast with a robo voice, kind of like a Siri voice type thing, uh, which can be very pleasant. And that information is graphically displayed on a video monitor, mapping, call information with things like door codes, key box codes, um, known risks or things like that instantly available. That same information is available inside the ambulance on uh, an inexpensive tablet, which lives in the front of the vehicle. Uh, one of the things that we do run into is when we receive a call, we often don't really hear the details of the call. So it's very common and there's nowhere for us to look. So what will happen is we'll get into the ambulance, we'll start it up, drive outside, they'll pick up the radio. And the first thing they ask is, what's the location? Where are we going? What are we going for? So <clears throat> what we're looking to do is streamline the dispatch process so that when a call is received day or night they're aware of it immediately with essential information avoiding the unnecessary radio communication back and forth they're going to say that they're going to it once they're on the way uh, but they have that it's mapping them to it uh, and that becomes super useful add to that it allows me or another supervisor the opportunity to maintain an overhead view via map where everybody is and exactly what they're doing. And this is a wonderful resource from a management perspective, because now I've got two resources in different parts of the county, uh, in different communities. I've got a third resource going somewhere different as priorities change, uh, as other calls come in, I know where people are and we can better inform our diversion and response uh, decisions. So it's a robust system. Uh, it's, uh, it's not uncommon in the public safety world. Uh, these systems have been around, they're well-tested, they've been utilized uh, for decades now. They've grown in their quality and the price points have come down substantially because of that. Um, but, uh, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel here. This is old news that we're looking to catch up. Uh, it's just something that, you know, has never been approached here before. So it's a very useful tool for us that will primarily give us information that's useful and get us to the calls, uh, I hesitate to say more safely, but with uh, better communication. So the goal here is to reduce response time. It's to get us out the door quicker. It's to make sure that we actually receive the call uh, where there's some concern that as we move forward with the digital system, we may not. The way that I'm looking to pay for this is I had a, in fiscal year 2022, there was uh, a capital request approval uh, for a prime event uh, station, like vehicle exhaust system that was approved. That has yet to realize um two years later so these funds were approved nothing has happened on it 
And we've had this very amazing offer of a free Plime event system that I'm really interested in moving forward with. But uh, there would, of course, for that system be some installation costs, some wiring, but we're talking pennies compared to the totality of a brand new system. Um, so to me, it makes absolute sense to move forward and pursue the free vehicle exhaust system for the garage and reallocate those funds to this project. Uh, so uh, I don't have knowledge of where those funds were originally uh, gathered from. Uh, Carolyn may have... Retained earnings, I believe. Okay. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, do you have any questions about the station alerting? Um, so the idea then would be that we would reallocate the retained earnings in the enterprise fund. It, they're in the enterprise fund. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. From the enterprise fund, from that exhaust system that we voted, and then you would pursue another avenue for the exhaust. Do you know how much that would be? I don't. I mean, the exhaust system itself would be at no cost to us. Uh, what we'd be looking at is uh, a day or two for uh, the technician to install it. I don't have any quotes on it. Uh, I, one of our folks, Zach, has reached out to a company that does those installations, but uh, we haven't received anything. Okay. Um, yeah, if that if that goes over ten thousand, we would have to review that as well. But I, I think this is pretty sensible, as you know, trying to reallocate your own funds, so to speak. Um, do we? Does anyone off the top of their head know how much that was when we approved that? That's what I'm looking for what year 2022 it's $30,000 oh it was 30,000 I think it's 30 yeah now it's 30 the price that I put here I'm requesting the reallocation of that $30,000 um, I don't believe that the station alerting system will require that $30,000 we've uh, reached out to three separate vendors uh, because it will definitely be over ten thousand dollars, and mm -hmm. we're looking to find the best product to meet our needs. There's a number of them out there. Uh, my belief is this will complete under budget, but I can't tell you exactly by how much. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I've got a question. Okay, so you've got so you've got this down as thirty thousand. $30,000, but then we have the other $30,000 that you can reallocate. That's what he's planning. That's how he's planning on doing it. The cost for the system would probably be 30, but we could reallocate from the old funds. Okay. The funds are already there set aside. Yeah. So you're just talking about take, okay. So, so it's, so it's not adding on to this, another 30,000. Correct. Correct. I'm just looking to transfer funds okay. essentially from that project reallocated to this so project. The next question is down here under cost estimate. You say, <laughs> you say um, between 30,000 to 75,000. So. Yeah. So there are some really super fancy schmancy systems out there that do all manner of things and if you're just looking at these programs um globally what you're going to find are systems that we just don't need okay um you know things that are built for department of defense uh contracts things that are built for very large urban uh, fire department uh, with you know multiple stations and there are things that the garage bay doors open when they feel pressure on the fire pole i mean there's there's all these components that go into it that we have absolutely no use for we're essentially looking for the installation of speakers strategically throughout the building in each bathroom in each bunk room in the hallways and in the two common areas integrated into that or alongside it depending on the vendor uh there is a lighting component the lighting components if integrated don't really add cost to the speaker unit it's combined uh if it's separate they're 
these are things you can replace at Home Depot. Uh, so, you know, there's nothing, no crazy proprietary expense if the light goes out or something like that, right? It's just very uh, achievable. And what's nice about that is if I'm uh, in the middle of the building, if I'm using the restroom, a light goes on, the speaker goes off. I know I have a call. If it's four in the morning and I've been out all day doing things and I'm asleep, my bedroom's going to light up. I'm going to get that call. And as I walk out the door, I'm going to be faced with a giant screen that says, hey, sleepyhead, you're going here. Here's how to get there. And this is what you're doing there. And I can make my way to the truck, see that same exact information there. Um, and I mean, that's pretty hard to beat. So one last question. So you know, you said um, annual fee ranging from twelve hundred to six thousand. So six thousand you would assume would be for seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah, so, once okay. again. So you feel pretty confident that it would be about fifteen hundred dollars. So we wouldn't have a big surprise saying, "Hey, I really need four thousand. I think it's probably going to be less than that. Okay. Um, but all right. I also anticipate paying that. Um, in my technology line item out of the budget. Great, thanks. Are there any other questions about station alerting? Seems pretty straightforward. We're just switching. And it's cool, right? Um, Very cool. What, a, what a wonderful tool to have for the department. We want to see a demonstration and put it in. And you're invited. Okay. All right. All right. Um, why don't we... Uh, move on to the ALS intercept then. Well, so again, speaking of electric vehicles, um, currently we have a hand-me-down from the police department 2013 uh, Ford Explorer, uh, just shy of 152,000 miles that is basically in parts held together with rust and medical tape. Um, they have over the, I'm not kidding, uh, over the last couple of years, my understanding is uh, the department has been pretty unwilling to perform any major repairs on it because those repairs would exceed the value of the vehicle. So we have maintained it as much as possible if it needs tires, it'll get tires. It gets its oil change. It gets its essential routine maintenance, but that's about it. Uh, as far as its ability to act as an emergency vehicle and safely respond to incidents in, uh, I'm concerned. So one of the things as far as the strategic vision I have for the department that I'm talking with the Board of Oversight about uh, regularly is our ability to respond in different capacities. So this is a replacement of a essential department vehicle that's going to add value to our department as it allows us to deliver intercept and mutual aid work without losing ambulance coverage to our own three communities. So how great is that? We get to kind of have it both ways. So what I've looked for is, uh, I think with uh, electric vehicles, not only does it fall in line in consistency with town goals, but I think it's good environmental stewardship. And we're at a place where the technology exists that there are some good choices for public safety response vehicles that are uh, EVs. So these aren't hybrid EV. Uh, this is a battery powered vehicle. Uh, there are really good choices of all-terrain, long-lasting, that would work for our department very well. So this also would <clears throat> require that we install the 
charging infrastructure uh, at the station at 88 Greenfield. And, uh, you know, this once again is an estimate. So there are only a couple of vendors, the way that we would go about this vehicle, like any police fire EMS vehicle is we would purchase through the vendor. Um, it would be purchased off the uh, statewide bid list, um, which typically offers pretty great prices. These pre-configured interceptor vehicles like this tend to cost a little more than consumer models, but the beauty of that is that they're pre-wired for radios. They have a lot of the warning equipment pre-installed. So they actually save money in upfitting costs after the vehicle arrives uh, at the vendor. Uh, so it's really gonna require very minimal upfitting. Uh, it's gonna require some cabinetry in the back to safely secure medical bags and equipment. We're gonna need to install our radios in it. We'll need to give it a good looking uh, wrap to brand it with our department logos and that's about it so overall we can get this very affordably for a vehicle uh, the charging infrastructure also is an estimate um, i honestly don't know how much it's going to cost to put electrical electric vehicle charging at that property um the $15,000 figure is basically an estimate, uh, a good faith estimate, uh, based off of talking uh, to folks in town uh, over the recent installation of the charging infrastructure here at this building. Uh, so that may look a little different, um, but I don't suspect it'll be more. This. I have a question about that. Uh, if, would you, would that 15, or whatever it would be, um, Cover that one vehicle, would there be potential for um, future vehicles being charged at that same station or would that be a later investment? Absolutely. So I like the idea very much that it can charge uh, multiple vehicles. Um, I'll be coming back to you in another year or two years from now looking for a second one of these. Um, and so it would be really great if we could charge both of them. The issue there is this is one I don't want a road sign pointing to uh, saying, please come charge your car here. I have no food to offer them. Uh, so um, this is really a, a department asset. I'm, I'm just wondering, um, Josh, uh, since that's a physical infrastructure, I wonder if we can pay for that 15000 um out of our rental. The rent line item would accommodate that. Yeah. And so, it's probably a very reasonable use of those funds. Yeah. I mean, I because it would be a town of Deerfield um, asset, you know, and it would be built permanently. I'm all about not taking from retained earnings. That's outstanding. Um. Yeah. I have a couple of questions. First of all, would that be a level three charger? Uh, that's the idea. Yeah. Okay. And so how, and this may seem like a silly question, but what happens if someone forgets to plug it in? Well, I mean, for shame, right? Well, but then um, you wouldn't have a, a vehicle in service. That's correct. Um, but what happens if somebody forgets to go to the gas station? I mean, you know, I think most of us have awareness. Uh, we have policy about not letting a gas tank go below half. Um, right. That's pretty normal. Okay. This is something that you keep your eyes on. That's, right? that's the hope. Okay. My second question is, I'm just noticing here, and if I remember correctly, so first of all, you said funds can derive from the transfer 44,000 unused from capital equipment allocation uh -huh. for cardiac monitor replacement. I was under the understanding that we that that was really necessary, or am I confused? Uh, you're not confused that we were sold on that being urgent. Yes, right. we were, yeah. and, that, and that there weren't replacement parts so that it was obsolete that we needed new. Allow me to explain. Okay. So, <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, that was absolutely correct. Uh, cardiac monitors are essential to running a paramedic uh, ALS service. Um, I don't know the specific details of why those monitors needed replacing. I do know that uh, I, I think they were older LifePak 12 versions that were upgraded to LifePak 15s, um, which is a good move for sure. Uh, but what happened is that 144,000, I believe it was, or 150,000 initially, uh, it was it was 100, just shy of $150,000 total. What happened was we ended up utilizing $104,000 of that for two cardiac monitors. And then we were very lucky this last year uh, with a uh, grant fulfillment, uh, which paid for the third monitor. So we didn't need to utilize all of these funds. So what we have remaining from that allocation is $44,000. That's a pleasant surprise. It's okay. awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, with that being said, you know, it would be nice if we could um, reallocate that to another need, right? And uh, unfortunately, this tired old truck we have in our uh, parking lot, it's time to go. So you can't reallocate that towards the 75000 That's the idea. So That's we would idea. reallocate that towards oh, the 75000 And then um, that means the rest of the project is paid for out of retained earnings. Uh, which is fantastic. And then uh, as uh, Carolyn had suggested, if we do the vehicle charging infrastructure out of our uh, rent line item uh, in our in our budget, um, that allows even less use of retained earnings. So I'm not looking for additional uh, use of tax funds or anything like that. I'm just looking once again to shift money around that's already been allocated, move it to this project instead and use uh, earned money to complete it. Thank you. And then um, did you look into, you know, what it would cost to get one with a regular ICE engine? With a what? Regular and in, in, internal combustion engine, non EV. It's interestingly pretty similar because uh, once again, uh, it's it's shocking how affordable vehicles are uh, through the municipal bid list. Um, but ultimately, they're all very competitively priced. Uh, this one is more expensive because it includes a lot of those features that we would have to go in and install after the fact. So ultimately, it's a savings. Yeah, that, that I get. I'm just wondering, like, you know, is there an apples to apples comparison? Both of them upfitted, one with a regular gas engine and one that's electric. Well, it's what pretty you... apples to apples, actually. You're, you're so looking they're, both, at a... they're both around 60K? Comparable. Yep. What is comparable? Around $60,000. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, the alternative that I was thinking of was a uh, Chevy Tahoe, mm -hmm. uh, which is a beautiful gas guzzling beast for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, they're very capable vehicles. Uh, they've become kind of the standard uh, police interceptor and fire department utility vehicle, um, you know, instead of Ford Explorers and things like that. They've become ubiquitous uh, because they're better on gas mileage and things like that. But the cost is nearly identical. So why not shoot for the electric vehicle? Uh, it's a nice not only thing to do, it's a good statement to make. I think it the right move um also i think um the state would be willing to um i think there's credits and stuff available yeah so i think it's close to twenty five hundred dollars of credit uh refundable after the purchase of it yeah. uh, that's right i think municipalities because i checked and i'm pretty sure municipalities are eligible for that. that's correct so and, uh, that would be something we would submit for that could help as well and it won't help us this time because this is a first vehicle, but in a, a fleet replacement, there's also a fleet credit. If you have another, if you buy another, uh, a second like vehicle, you know, I don't know. I don't know the years on that, but I know the uh, Mosquito District was looking at getting electric, trying to get electric, little electric pickups. 
instead of, you know, our gas guzzling because, you know, we're all over the state too. So um, we were eligible for some credits, but we had to get at least two vehicles. And, you know, that was not going to happen. Do you want me to put a second vehicle on here? Oh, no, no. <laughs> so, not now. Yeah. 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 All right. But I, I, I know the state is doing all kinds of stuff with the fleets, you know, and, and we are as a municipality eligible, even though there's three of us together, it's considered a municipal operation. So we would be, we have credit. Available. That's outstanding. Yeah. Any other questions on the vehicle replacement? No. All right, let's move on to the striker stretcher. We currently have three stretchers. This is a, bless you, this is a, um, <clears throat> stretchers have changed a lot since I started in this business. Uh, it used to take two of us, and uh, I've lost a lot of uh, really good partners to back injuries and hip injuries and burst out knees and all of those things uh, over the years. Uh, now these stretchers are just a stroke of genius. Um, I'm sure you've seen them. It loads itself. I don't need to lift on it. I've lost all my forearm strength. It's a little tragic, but um, they truly are back savers. Uh, they're wonderful. That technology comes at a pretty substantial cost. Um, we typically justify that cost in it's going to prevent a injury, yeah. you know, uh, which makes a yeah. lot of sense. So we have one and it is built in 2009 and it is end of life. Uh, it's something that the manufacturer, uh, they'll service it, but they won't fix it. So they'll keep it operating, but any problems that arise with it, no luck. It's end of life. Um, so we're looking to replace that stretcher because these things are used on every single call we go on. They're they're not gentle. Um, you know, these things hold up to 750 pounds. They take a real beating. So this is just to replace a uh, very essential uh, need. Uh, we can't do our job without this. So I will say that this project, uh, which comes in at $35,500 uh, for the replacement of it, uh, once again, uh, Lori McComb did submit uh, for a grant to try and offset this, uh, which if successful will be outstanding. And then we can talk in a year or two about reallocating these funds, which would be wonderful. Uh, I don't know if that grant will be successful uh, just because of the way that uh, fire administration grants uh, have been reduced uh, throughout the Commonwealth this year, um, but it's possible. As an EMS entity, we're not eligible for all of the grant funding that fire services are, so I hope it's not a miracle that we get that funding source, but it would sure be nice. Uh, you'll have to forgive me a little bit. This wasn't one that uh, I wrote up and submitted, um, but this is essentially made to be paid out of retained earnings. Josh, um, Trevor had a question. Yes. Was, Trevor, come up and sit at the mic so everybody can hear it. Thank you. I know I'm a killer. I'm awful. I don't know this. Hi, <laughs> Trevor. Thank you. How are you? Um, so we we purchased these not that long ago. I want to say within five years. I'm wondering what the lifespan. I know they get used all the time, and they're you know it's a vital piece of information. So piece of equipment to use. Um, wonder what the lifespan is. I think it was maybe. Four years ago, we bought all three. Uh, we bought one and then we outfitted 
I know we outfitted the new ambulance with one and then we outfitted the others because it was motorized. So I think they're fairly new, but I just wondered how long they last. So typical lifespan, uh, if it's very seldom used, you could look to about 10 years. If it's used with more regularity, you're cutting that down. I believe Tim Drumgold put a seven-year expected lifespan on this. Right. Uh, we could possibly extend that. That is an estimate. A lot of that has to do with the manufacturer's yeah. recommendations and yeah. all of that. Uh, we have two very decent stretchers. This one uh, is not. Okay. Uh, so the things that were replaced recently were the uh, the stretcher for the newer ambulance. Yeah. And then there were some stair chairs that were yeah. part of that. Um, but uh, and the power loaders we put in all the new ones. All the, the, that's and correct. All and the, the power the load is the magic unit that lives inside the ambulance that allows this thing to function. So maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Maybe we did all the power loaders and not the stretcher itself. Um, I also think that Probably when accurate. we ordered the ambulance, we ordered one of the new ones yes. is in the new, right. in the queue with the new ambulance. Right. Which That's that did not, not end up happening. The oh, it's uh not. the recent ambulance order does not include a stretcher with it. It um it has the power oh, load yeah. component, but the stretcher I'm itself. Remembering too. Do we have... I'm thinking it's probably the loaders we did and not the stretchers. Yeah, maybe that's what. Yeah, because we there's this stretcher, and then we have a second stretcher that's not quite as aged. Yeah. Uh, but we'll be looking to replace that at some point as well yeah that's got to be what it is then yeah I, um okay we, we yeah it, it wasn't too long ago but it you know time does get by really it fast. does but i think i do think there were the loaders because we wanted to outfit all of them and we all marveled at the one out there when you just hit the button and it lifted up and right in yeah. oh, no it's a thing of beauty for sure safety. yeah sure. absolutely i mean it's it's a lifesaver for us but yeah. uh i don't want to say the wrong thing here uh i think there was power load but i also recall seeing something about stair chairs i would have to get back to you on that after yeah. talking to um tim or Lori or zach or somebody who's been around a bit longer than me now which i'm happy to do yeah, uh, well, it was a while ago, but it wasn't that. Regardless, long. this yeah. uh, this stretcher is needed. Is needed. Uh, yeah. It's beyond its useful life. Maybe Casey, can you look back? Do you have old, the old, um, mm -hmm. like year a few years? I have. I could go look in my office. I don't have it on my laptop. Um, it's got to be more than five years old. I mean, I've been no, no years, yeah, it's so it's got to be. And in any way, so oh, I might not. Right. If, if it's that it's old, then... no, I appreciate yeah, the question. Well, sure, yeah, thank you. I might not have it. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was seven or ten years because that was like into the decade, but I think it was like 2018 or 19, something like that. I think you're correct. Yeah, I don't know if I have it. I would actually have to check into my yeah. records because I don't have a lot of them. I, I don't have that, I don't have any, I don't have my folder here in my scams folder that I could look it up. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah, we can we can follow up on that later. So which, which um which ambulance would this go in? Well if we replace it, this is going to go in our newest ambulance and be the frontline stretcher that we use. Okay. Shiny new stretcher. So that that ambulance that we ordered did not have the stretcher on it. Correct. Oh man. Different so, different yeah. departments approach this a different way. You okay. know, a lot of departments have a hard time spending half a million dollars on an ambulance, right? A fire truck should cost seven fifty, right? What what is this pickup truck costing that much for? A lot of that expense is the power load in the stretcher, right? So they can take that piece out of it and say, look at this amazing ambulance for $350,000, right? And it seems like a better deal. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, it was three seventy five, dollars and it was 125 more than what we were saving for. They're not cheap. I know. It's just incredible. 
So how would we fund this then if the grant is not successful? If the grant is not successful, this would uh, come from retained earnings. Retained earnings. Okay. Do you know the timeline for the grant? Uh, no, not offhand, uh, but I can find out for you. Okay, thanks. And then is this a 2025 request? This is a 25 request. Okay. All right. Any other questions on the striker stretcher? All right. Um, and then the last one that we have here is the power load system replacement. So uh, this was one that was uh, submitted that I'm actually looking to withdraw. Okay. Um, I don't need this anymore. Ah, those are the best kind of requests. Just kidding. Um, so oh. <laughs> what this was, um, was they had run into an issue and they were uh, uh, led to believe that the entire unit needed replacement. Uh, it turns out that's not necessarily the case that uh, it can be worked on. It's fine. It's safe. It's feasible and in good repair. Uh, there's no need to replace it at this time, uh, which is helpful. So what um, so what are the ages of the power loaders and then the age of the stretchers that we have just from a planning point of view uh, off the top of your head? Do you have an idea? I have no idea. I know that our uh, stretcher, our oldest one that we're looking to replace is uh, from 2009, uh, which is ancient history when you're talking about stretchers. Okay. Um, and I don't know the age of the, the power loads. I know that there was the recent project uh, to replace some of those, but um, I don't know their ages. I do know that they're all in good function. They're serviceable um, and okay. we can continue using them. What we should do, um, Josh, just as a uh, thing that you could work on is is do our own SCEMS capital plan. In and I know, I know you're in the process of doing that, and I, uh, I'm sure, but it would be very helpful because one of the things that, um, you know, for us as an oversight board, it was always really tough to figure out, you know, when stuff based on our usage and then what the manufacturers recommended were like an Auburn kind of department. What what does our stuff really last? And and also just to make sure that we are really ma maintaining our equipment for longer life. I mean, it, it made more sense for us to invest in maintenance and, and repair. I'm worried that we pay too much for maintenance right now, uh, for sure. Uh, okay. But um, absolutely, uh, a capital improvement plan, probably looking at a five-year period and then looking at uh, longer-term equipment like vehicle replacement and things like that. Absolutely. Well, we need to upgrade it because um, the ambulance replacement was based on, you know, Pre-COVID costs versus, yep. you know, post-COVID costs. And we we had been putting money aside and then, you know, the price jumped up, you know, 70% yeah. from what we, are, what we had put aside. So it would be very helpful to have a plan that we could update on a, every six months or every year as an oversight board, then come here and update our regular process. It'll go on next meeting's agenda. Thank you, Josh. I know you're doing a, an awful lot really quick and I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, any other questions about any of these or the cancellation of this request in specific? Anything else? Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. it's cathartic, go for it, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all of the, uh, the clever, um, you know, movement of funds to get this done. It's uh, much appreciated. Oh, well, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that uh, a lot. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for Thanks coming so in. Thanks so much. Thanks, Good Josh. Evening. Nice meeting you. You also. And I definitely do want a demonstration. Yeah, come on by. Be... Me too, but not at my house. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not that I don't want you guys in my house. Yeah. They stand there yeah. watching, not, <laughs> yeah. not in the stretcher. Oh yeah. All right. So next, we're going to move over to the South County Senior Center Capital Van Purchase. Um, Jennifer, I'm sorry to keep you waiting for so long. Um, no problem. Yeah. Um, does uh, everyone have a copy of that? Is that the Plum Tree Road one? Uh, no, that's the van. This the van. Is the van. Okay, yep. Because I've been texting Jennifer about the van. Okay. or about the Plum Tree Road. Yeah, the one. the Plum Tree Road one. Um, I had rescinded that because I was told that it was not going to go in front of Capitol because of the deficit. Well, everything goes in front of Capitol, and they tell me what to do with it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. I didn't send it to the other two towns cap or to uh, to Waitley's Capital, so I assume okay. that um, it wasn't going to Deerfields either. Um, well, I so... gave them everything, and then we told them what was on hold and what they probably couldn't, didn't have to deal with, like Josh just did. Okay, no problem. Um, so the and I really like Josh's way of saying that they're using a 2013 van. We're using a 2011 van that we got donated to us. Um, it's a Ford uh, 350 Econo van. Uh, it was donated to us before the pandemic or around the time of the start of the pandemic um, from Hatfield Senior Center. It has um, continued to provide us with good usage, but we are also we have a great opportunity for us to be able to receive a new vehicle. Um, the state of Mass through their Mass Dot program um, offers a selection of vehicles that senior centers and municipalities can choose from where the state will fund 80% of the vehicle cost, where we would have to provide a 20% cash match, not an in-kind donation. Um, so I am presenting a capital request to all three of the towns that make up the South County Senior Center. Um, and because Deerfield has the most residents, um, we are submitting $12,500 as our request to, um, to be able to purchase a, excuse me, trying to get all the details of the vehicle in front of me. My apologies. Um, it is a, it, um, I'm sorry. I thought I attached that to this document, Casey. We have the MDOT information. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, so if you have that there, um, we chose one that would be a, um, that would increase, I believe it's a 14 passenger vehicle. It's a Ford E350 cutaway. Um, it includes two wheelchair spaces. And if the wheelchair spaces are not utilized, there is a double seat that we are able to use that basically folds up against the wall in the van. Um, our current vehicle has a, what we call a jump seat. So you basically push a button, push a lever, it goes up against the wall and folds in order to allow a wheelchair to go into that place. Our goal is to expand our fleet, if you want to call it that, um, with a second vehicle. The reason being is we um, we've been we've been offering a variety of trips. We currently have a transportation service incentive grant through the MCOA and EOEA project, um, where we are able to pay for the fares. Um, for seniors who reside in Sunderland, Deerfield, or Waitley, and they go back and forth over the the invisible border between the FRTA and the PVTA um, so to destinations that the RTA in their areas may not cover. We also focus on transportation um, directly to the senior center during our program days. Um, with that being said, we have been able to bring seniors to the center who have been homebound for quite a while and haven't been out of their homes. And we've gotten them to go to the center, um, you know, over the past, past year, um, year and a half that we've fully been using this van. Um, when I came on board at the end of 22, January of 22, 
um, we did not, it was not being utilized at the time and we did not implement the process of utilizing the vehicle until later in 2022 because we had to make sure that the staff was trained through mass dot training um, that are offered. So we are asking for the support um, of this vehicle. This vehicle will last up to eight years or 150,000 miles. Um, obviously, the vehicle that we have now is past their eight-year uh, lifespan, um, and we have provided support for seniors to over 313 um, rides so far for last year. And we have uh, regular patrons who use the vehicle regularly, whether it's to program. Uh, we also do medical appointments um, that people are unable to get to from our area to Northampton and Springfield um, and Greenfield, depending on where they're starting from. Um, we've had some seniors who had been regular members of the center who've had a medical emergency, you know, and ended up at the hospital. Um, and then when they're, they've are they been returned home, um, you know, they now face some ability challenges. So this new vehicle would provide us with two accessible um, spaces in addition to the one we currently have. So it would open it up to three accessible um, spaces. And that would be wonderful for us. We currently have quite a few seniors or older adults who have accessibility challenges. Um, so we would like to be able to bring people uh, like on field trips we go to. For example, last year we um, went to the Eastern States Exposition. Um, we had our vehicle and we utilized the um, an enterprise vehicle. Um, we've also used the high school's a van through um, wonderful collaboration with them. But the unfortunate part of renting an enterprise vehicle or utilizing the high school vehicle is there is not a wheelchair or accessible space. So there's no lift on those vehicles and there's no space um, for older adults who have a need. Um, so having this would provide that support for us. The portion that we are asking for from Deerfield is 12,500 and the other uh, two towns are getting the other amounts of the 60 uh, 6250 for each of the other two towns. Great. Uh, any questions for Jennifer? No, thank you Jennifer. That was a pretty complete description. Thanks. <clears throat> Yeah, it makes sense to me. Thank you very much for all you're doing. And I I really like that, uh, you know, you're getting a class D vehicle, you know, I'm happy to see that it was at, at the 14 passenger limit. So anyone yeah. could drive it with a license. So that's great. And um, I, I just really like all the work that you're doing for our seniors. So thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, just Two items to note is that the uh, that there is a collision and avoidance system that would be in there and internal grab bars added. That's what equals the twenty five thousand. Um, so those are some definitely um, good items to have, especially with people walk walking around the vehicle. Great. Speaking on behalf of the BOO, the booth fully supports this. Um, Jennifer's done an amazing job being able to get seniors to the center. Um, and this is just going to expand that, expand the trips. Um, it's just getting people that have been shut in for years back to the center. And we can see by the growth of the senior center what what uh, Jennifer's been able to do. And this is just going to, you know, expand that. And we, you know, we need a safe transportation. We need we need to get our seniors out of their house and around other people, socialize and and get to other events. So very grateful for the work. Great. I, to I totally agree. Yep. Um, I really am appreciative of, of what you're trying to do for our homebound yeah. seniors. Um, it's a big difference. Yeah. Uh, I know, um, from a mental health point of view, from public health, yeah. I was always concerned about mental health and, and, um, the interaction between Cindy Majewski as yeah. our public health nurse with our shut-ins and the work that you've been doing, Jennifer, that, um, hadn't been done in the past. And of yeah. course with COVID. Right. It was completely shut down. Yeah. Um, what is is amazing. It's really um I'm very thankful for it. Yeah. She does a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Our outreach coordinator's been really effective at um gaining 
a good rapport with a lot of the seniors that have been homebound and encouraging them to come to center. And we've been able to get, um, you know, about four people that I know are homebound previously regularly attending. Um, and our goal is to, you know, reduce iso social isolation and to focus on um, increasing positive interaction, positive uh, mental health um, support, because as, as you all may know, um, among seniors, suicide is a really high risk. And um, by getting people within the community, it's been able to really um, bring a lot of positive uh, feedback from, from all of them. So thank you for your support. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so um, we've gone through a lot of requests um, already. Um, we've already done many for the select board. Um, we didn't have a quorum, but we at least started talking about those last week, Denise. Uh, and then, you know, we just went through a bunch tonight. I just wanted to see how everyone's appetite was for um, moving further, or if we wanted to um, schedule, a, um, move, move on to the scheduling portion or... Well, the only uh, the only thing is um, we have a quorum tonight, so and Trevor is here. So oh. <laughs> before you leave, <laughs> um, I I I just wanted to make sure everybody's questions were answered about the asset management mm -hmm. um, requests because um, Trevor Trevor has been instrumental in making sure that we got this grant and that we've been able to figure out how we're going to fund it yeah. and. Um, and I do think it is really critical. We one of one of the things that's really important is we plan more. Uh, four inches of rain last night. Yeah, four inches of rain. Um, do you want to yes. give everybody a brief? Just because Denise sure. wasn't here, yeah, just absolutely. a quick rundown because yeah. and it, and it there's is two. Happy to do that. So well, we'll um, before we do yeah. that, though, I, that yeah, that's fine. I yeah. just want to make sure we'll that we're clear on which part of the packet that is. So. I think the, the 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 two that I have are the clean water stormwater asset management. Yep. Yep. Um. Or actually, I are there's these, two. There's, there's a sewer there's, there's, asset management and stormwater asset management. I made yep. that same mistake last yep. week. I know the it's sewer, because of the yeah. title. That's why I They're both the same. I'm yeah. Sorry, it's my fault. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, make sure you can very the similar questions. grant same yeah same person offering yeah. them same same uh so dpc our engineer for a sewer uh, well actually may i interrupt you one of second course. do do we need to open a select board meeting for this or can we no. just have trevor respond to public comment okay yeah yep. i just want to make sure we're sure. good with open meeting no, that's yeah yeah that's good yeah. No, no, we'll take it. Though, but yeah we aren't deliberating i'm just asking yeah you know, i guess just sure. explain what, yeah. what, what it's yeah. all about um just because Trevor is more informed than I am. All right, great. Do you want to start with the stormwater or the sewer? Sure. Yeah, stormwater. I, I see stormwater. I can hit both. I'll just wait until Denise is ready. Sure. Oh, she was here. There's two separate things, Denise, and it looks like almost the same thing, identical. Yep. What Mark and I did was we put um, paper clips on. So you yeah, I'll, 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 I don't so, know what Carrie did, but Carrie probably they're separated out. <laughs> they're pretty. They're pretty straightforward, <laughs> and I'll be I'll be quick on this. They're uh, DPC. Uh, Dave Prickett Engineering is our uh, engineer for the sewer project um, and, and all a lot of our sewer stuff. So um, he was notified that um, there were grants available with a lot of money that came into the state. DEP was um, offering grants to do um, asset management plans, which is just an evaluation of what your sewer system or your stormwater system um, is, is looking like. And we did one and we paid for it. Um, Back in 2015 or so, we did an asset management plan, and that helped us guide what we were going to do with our sewer system down in, in South Deerfield and to look at Old Deerfield as well and all the pipes. So they're supposed to do them every five years or so. This one we applied for and got a grant, uh, about 200, 200, 250000 each. Um, and that was uh, going to be some money that we would put in. There's in-kind match for our employees um, doing the work, and then... Um, and then, mo like seventy five percent of the grant is from from the state. So we were gonna uh, we're gonna do a evaluation of the sewer systems again and all the collection systems. Now that we've done upgrades and all, uh, to kind of get a a relook at what what we need to do in Old Deerfield and all the other pipes. Um, so that's that's the sewer 
uh, one and, and then we take a photo and you get a big binder a photo of every manhole, every pipe, what the condition is, what the cameras are. We have better cameras now back back then that you know now that we did back then. Um, so then so that's one and we're we'll use the enterprise fund and funding to to pay for that. And then we have an, um, another opportunity which hasn't been available, but it's to do all our waste wa our um, storm water all of our drainage, all the culverts, you know, every kind of um, pipe and drain that takes all of the water off the roads. And um, so this would give us camera work on all of that and an asset management plan and a book on that to say, okay, this is really what's in bad shape. There's where the pipes are misaligned or broken or, you know, so we'll get some good info. And I thought after all the storms we've had, what a great idea to be able to get some grant money to kind of just evaluate all that. The other thing I wanted to do was evaluate, um, and we'd get permission from DOTs to evaluate Sh uh, Sugarloaf Street as well, because that's the one thing we wanted to do at that last meeting was to go, what's in the ground? And um, Trevor, would, the camera, would the, I, I thought that the issue why we couldn't do that is that our cameras wouldn't go down far enough. So they, we have, yeah, he's in, uh, DPC has invested in a lot of camera work over the last cameras and ability to do that camera work over the last few years. So he has the ability to do a lot of that. So we, we should be able to get everything figured out, you know, at least most of the stormwater stuff in the town. And then we'll have a good, you know, a good plan going forward. Right. Yeah. So I thought that would be a good, you know, two birds with one stone. And then um, I still can't remember which fund we were. We talked with Kevin and Brenda and we figured a, a way to fund this. Um, so it's about 30,000, I think. 34,000. Yeah. 34 for one. Yeah. So question, when when you get this, um, do you, what's, do you have a timeline? And yes, it's about each, it's how? about 18 month program. Like it needs to be spent within 18 months. It would start after July 1st right. and it would, they would take that year to kind of do all the camera work and then put together. I could, we, we got a binder last time and it just has, you know, a good narrative of everything. And then it has photos of every manhole, mm -hmm. the conditions of it. So we're going to be in, in good shape with a lot of that. So the binder would help you uh, decide how to proceed. Exactly. Yeah, would give an overview. Like last time, it really gave us an overview of what was um, what was needed at the plants, um, and we'll have both plants evaluated again. Um, but in the storm, you know, and even in the stormwater or sewer lines, it like it, it allowed us to know that coming off of Pine Nook was the worst pipes that we have, and it'd be curious to see after all the storms. Are, what what condition they're in now and um and it really kind of lets us prioritize there's like you know uh red orange yellow green kind of pipe mm -hmm. condition so you can kind of get an idea of really where, what we should tackle first what's the most critical and um gives you gave us an idea of you know budget wise what it would take to do some of this work too so it's a really good you know, we'll be getting quite a bit of money from each to um, to make that happen. The reason, so the reason why the stormwater one is so important is not only um, what we have what what we've been told is that we will have double the water that we are dealing with right now as a result of climate change. So the idea is how do we build capacity within the system? How do we move mm -hmm. forward in a the most smart way? Mm -hmm. And and you can't really do that until yep. you have an a baseline yep. analysis of what we really have. Yeah. And that also feeds into what we're trying to do with the campus is that every time we do pavement, rip up pavement, put yep. down pavement, we're putting in storage capacity. Right. Every I mean, that's what's so exciting with the Leary lot, is there's huge storage capacity. Yep. And and we'll and it I mean that's Hey, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> well, the choir yeah. totally. Four, four, four inches of rain yesterday yeah. oh, when I, I came down this morning. I couldn't believe it. It just bloody brook was yeah. maxed out, and the it's like it was over. Yeah. I have a pool. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. And it always comes and down. And a water, water feature. Yeah, yeah. If it, even if it's dry, it's still coming out your front yard. I, I mean, yeah. it's, so we've got to figure out truly what we're going to do. And yeah, this is great, and so. That's part of the well, reason. the work up on you know, um, 
Hawk, I drove up Hawks Road this morning just to mm -hmm. kind of get my eyes on that because I haven't been up yet. And it looked in good shape. There's areas that we could definitely still improve and some of the pipes, you know, what they've pulled out and replaced, which look great. So, but there's a lot of work. I can see where you need to raise the road in some areas or, I mean, they've been trying to move that water, but it kind of gets stuck before it starts down that hill and it's really hard to move. It's all swampland up there. So in that one section, and then it goes downhill both sides. So uh, it's tough. There's, it's hard work, you know, hard living in rural mountains and mm. getting water run off them. No, yeah. thanks. Yeah. So that Thank was, you. Really good, yep. Trevor. So, Appreciate that. Yeah, just a quick question then. So uh, it sounds like the uh, sewer would come out of enterprise funds. Yep. And then you said that you were working with Brenda to figure out where the other Yeah, Yeah, I, I know we nailed that down. I can't remember what which line. We we were either talking from, um, we, we were thinking of using some of the money from so we the have money for sewer. 20 or 18, well, I think it was at the 20. The stormwater asset management one. Or or it was from. Um, oh, you're talking about the um, July 21 yeah. damage. Or we look at it or, um, for, for, you know, because it doesn't need to be funded until next year. So, you know, we, we could wait till 2025. Um, but one, of, I was thinking we should pull it from the storm stuff since it's stormwater related and. You know, I mean, what, what better use of money? Yeah, I just feel like it's the right place to pull it from, and then if, and then whatever we have to pay for the roads, either we we're doing the ARPA swap or the other thing, we pull from stabilization. I'm I'm, I'm okay with that because um, um, I I know we're going to get some additional money from the state in the yeah. next round of that That's five million. Joe thought she was going to fight for that for sure. Right, she's going to fight for it, but. You know, who knows whether we get 50,000 or a half million. Right. You know, I mean, there's a huge difference. Yeah. So, but this is such a small amount. That's what I felt. And this is such a huge asset. I mean, a huge asset, but a huge, yeah. really great thing for us to, I, I feel like it's it's a good investment. And it was in line with what, yeah. what was intended. And that, then so. that's money that we already have. Money. Right. That's good. So yeah. It's not like we're getting that. less water. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. And it does fit. Yep. You know what? That was my thought. And then Brenda thought something else too. So I, I couldn't remember, but I thought that's where I was going to ask from. Well, but we have to, one we have to wait until we get the final numbers from Hawks Road. And yeah. Go. Yeah. So we'll figure that out for meeting anyways. That's but it. it. But it wasn't coming out of. Yeah. We weren't going to tax anything, you know, just raise money to do yeah. it. We had money, money already. And set aside. Sounds good. Good. Thank you, Trevor. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, Trevor. All right. Have a good night. Yeah, you Thanks too. Thanks so much. Yep. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let, could we move on to the town portions of the Stillwater Bridge repairs? Do you sure. Have, okay. I'll great. speak to it as best I can. All right. So this does not have a number attached to it. Um. And it's of concern to the board. They're not sure that they want to include an article to to obtain permission to purchase or take these property, whatever element of right of way we're going to need to do that is adjacent to repairs for the Stillwater Bridge. So Mass DOT will be repairing the Stillwater Bridge and really it, they'll be helping the town immensely by doing so. Um, but the town owns the roads on either side of the bridge. And so the changes, the design that's going to be put in place will require um, eminent domain takings or rights of way, potentially easements for all of that work. And there's a timeline that DOT wants to see. They want us to start this work now so that everything is complete when they go out to bid for the project. So they want to see this start in the spring. Um, and we recently had a meeting with them to discuss it. And they've given us preliminary documentation, um, which identifies the general area of these rights of way, which is what you're seeing. That's the most updated plan. Mm -hmm. Um What's going to need that? There's a lot of legwork that goes on to do this in terms of legal work, surveying work, 
appraisal work because we have to appraise whatever those rights of way are or the easements are. So it's a it's a it's a process. Let's put it that way. Um, I drafted two articles to deal with this, and I had planned on having legal counsel address this somewhat next week when she comes to discuss the warrant with the board. Um, but essentially, if I don't put this forward and have it on somebody's radar screen, you won't be prepared if there are questions at any point. Um, and the board is prepared to pull these two articles. There's two articles related to this. One is a funding article. One is permission to acquire. Um, the board's prepared to pull them if we're not if we physically are not prepared to address it at town meeting. So that's a separate conversation. Um, I think long term we need to get this done sooner rather than later because we do believe that process is going to take a while, but the design isn't final. So any of these rights of way could be amended. And that was the language I was told we needed to include in any documents, anything we put before town meeting. So it's basically a preliminary request to say, hey, we're going to have to do this. We want it on your radar screen. If it does go to town meeting, capital needs to be prepared to say, yes, we reviewed it. Okay. At least in its preliminary stages. This is the best I can do. It's kind of, I'm kind of in the same spot that um, Chris Nolan is in because I don't have a lot of information, but it will ramp up when it starts to ramp up. At least you'll know that there's, that something went before you and yep. t the townspeople at town meeting will as well. Um, I, I just want to add, um, because I, I'm not for having the articles on town meeting at this point because we don't have enough information. However, I am in support of, um, putting this forward because and I and I don't have a clue what this what we should use for expense, but I think we should put in there fifty thousand dollars, and or something like that. Because we have legal fees, you have surveying, everything is really slow boat. So okay, this this I can put a number in because you're going to have to do research. You're going to have the problem is great hydro. I don't know if um. Uh, Great Hydro is is the current um, owner of the dams, but I don't know if the actual property uh, that was ever transferred from Trans Canada that's on the north side. If you if you come down Upper Road um, uh, from like Clarkdale to go to the town hall, you have on one side DCR. Okay, so DCR owns that property. It's an APR. There's going to be all kinds of legal hassle because it's DCR and it's already it's preserved land. Secondly, on the on the other um, uh, on the other side is that was Trans Canada property, but when Great Hydro got bought out, or Great Hydro bought out Trans Canada, and then Trans Canada. And, and then Great Hydro got bought out by Hydro Quebec. There's been transfers of the dams, but I'm not sure if the actual property ever transferred from um, Trans Canada. So there's going to be huge research on that side. On the Clarkdale side or the north side of the bridge, again, that's Hydro Canada, Trans Canada. Um, Great River Hydro, who knows who actually owns the actual property research. So there's a huge amount of research for these that. But then on the other side, on the lower road, where lower road um, turns, we do have a residence. And we want to make sure that the resident is completely informed before we go to town meeting as to what the impact is on the property. So I feel that there is a real need to move forward on the money towards preparing for this. We need to have information and there has to be a huge amount of research, but I do not believe that we are ready to go to town meeting to say that we are going to take property by eminent domain. And I do not believe that um, we even have a cost estimate that's realistic, but I would like to put it in here as a capital request for this coming year so that um, it's in our system 
and that we will have a special town meeting because we own that bridge. And I have worked really, really hard since 2010 to get that bridge repaired at state cost. The current estimate for this project is over $23 million. And we do not want to let that opportunity go and have that assumed as our expense. So it's the Mass DOT is investing in this. We need to be a partner, but I also don't want to uh, get ahead of ourselves. We can just call a town meeting. Yeah. $2,500 to cost of a special yeah. town meeting to address this when we're ready is more than uh, beneficial to us to be ready and get that $23 million project continually to move. But on the other hand, if we vote it down at town meeting because we have no information and I myself as a voter wouldn't want to vote for something that there's only partial information. I think that will be problematic. So will we be well, I think you need to define what partial information is because partial information is partial information for two years. I'm and I have to I have to tell you, Carolyn, if we wait until a last minute situation, DOT is going to be very unhappy. They told us what their timeline was. What's the timeline? Two years. Well, I thought it was supposed to be done this this upcoming summer. No. No, no. They don't start but they don't start bidding until the end of next year. So do we do we actually need to take any property in eminent domain or do we just need easements? Um, it's going to be rights of way and oh, easements. Right and, and, easements. Well, and so rights need... of way are going to be eminent domain. It is it is eminent domain. Well, I was going to say, do you still need eminent domain yeah. for that, even though it's not a land acquisition? Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, for some, one of the big problems is I, I think it's Kostiak, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, on Lower Road. Their property is so close to the road. So I'm That's wondering, part of the problem. I'm sort of curious as to what the design of the bridge can it be instead of the way it's straight now? Could it go over a little bit so you don't have to take as much? We can't the change property? the bridge, desi bridge design at this point. Well, I don't know what the bridge design is. I haven't seen it. So we've had conversations about this. There is a lot of information out there, but they do not even show us the bridge design until it's 25%. Oh, okay. So That's we don't have any control over that. Then I think I think whoever needs to should start talking to that talking with that family like now yeah and uh, that, that was another question i had can we at least do title searches for yeah. that property so here's the problem title searches aren't something that we do we get that to legal to do that's well, a part of it of is we're going to end yeah. up having it's running like into costs for the yeah, title yeah. search and all that other legal stuff but it may be premature this is my this is my concern is understanding the process and i told the board this yesterday I've never done a process this big. So my own ignorance is sort of in the way here. But on the other hand, we have DOT to guide us through it. We have legal counsel to guide us through it. And frankly, it's we make sure that we follow sort of their timeline, because if we run into a snag on our end, it could torpedo the project and nobody wants that to happen. So what I'm trying to do is sort of balance those two requests. Yeah. And that's DOT wants us to do it now, but we also know we have to go through a bunch of hoops to get there. Yeah. So I totally understand where Carolyn's coming from. I'm just really, I want everybody to understand that if DOT says jump and we have to jump, that's yeah. what we're going to have to do. And that's, you know, that can't be an argument later on. So that was one of the reasons that I wanted to get this before you guys so that you at least were prepared if anybody asked I'm you. I'm supporting this. Yeah. I'm just not supporting the imminent domain on the warrant article at this point. Yeah. And how would we fund this? Um, would this just That's the question. I mean, we're going to have to find a way to fund it anyway if we yeah. if we want the bridge can to we, be done. Can we ask? Um, can we? Yeah. Ask... Everybody that lives that, that crosses that yeah. wants that bridge. I get it. I mean, can, yeah. But can we ask Kevin? Is this um um a chapter ninety expense limit uh legitimate expense? I don't know, but I can ask him. Let me write myself a note. Um, because we did we did receive extra chapter ninety money. Um, this year we just got notification. So, Oops. Um, although we got, we can spend it ten times over. There's no question. But um, yeah, I'm just thinking because we are tight 
but I feel like this is important. This it's, is a, it's a very prudent thing. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is a. The project is at least twenty three million at this point. Of course, it hasn't gone out to bid, but right, that's a cost estimate, and it's and it's two years out from going out to bid, so it only is going to cost more money. Yeah, and so we certainly want to push this along, and we want to say that we're. I feel DOT, if we do this this year and we put off the articles until the fall special town meeting or anticipate trying to get more information between now and the fall, that isn't going to affect the timeline with them. Yeah. Well, we'll have to check in with them about that. And I mean, this isn't really this committee's charge, but Denise brings up a really good point with the, the homeowners that are right near the bridge. Like if, if there's a way to prioritize, you know, the the title search, um, you know, for for them. I think that would be good. Yeah. Well, no, I don't disagree with you. It's just what I don't want to do is have to duplicate work. Right. That's my concern. Yeah. I don't want to have to duplicate work. And you know, it makes a lot of sense to reach out to the property owners. On the other hand, we don't have anything to say to them yet. So, and, and that's not necessarily all our fault. Oh, I don't mean to go and talk to them. I mean, yeah. just to figure out like, you know, for for that because there's there's probably gonna have to be a, a tunnel title work especially for what you brought up um carolyn with the uh, the different companies changing hands just wondering if you know we can at least get the deerfield residents at the top the top of the pile you know so to speak so we know like how close we'll be to their property well see part of the issue is we don't know we don't have final rights of way plans. Those are, the, like I said, those are the most recent ones. We've seen, I've seen at least one other, and I think there were two um, in the last six months. But as soon as DOT reached out to us, I reached out to council. And we had a preliminary conversation about how this process goes. So if it means we take these off, I will have to let DOT know that we'll call a special town meeting in the next six months to deal with it because the board's concerned about notification of the property owners. It's a legitimate thing to say, and I'll be curious to see what they say back well, to me. And, and Casey, I think it's a legitimate question to ask them right now, how, how close do they plan on being to that property owner's property? I don't well, that's look at the plant. Yeah, that well, that there is information. They're small, but that's yeah, I, what, I, how I had to. Plan, that's how I had to. I was looking at the plans, I and I you know to look through all of this. I don't so see the. I don't see like a plot plan that shows. No, like, they're neighbors, not going to show us that. They're yeah. just going to show us sort of a basic identifier. Okay. And and that's what Carolyn's concerned about, and I understand that. I don't have anything more fleshed out. Um, but we're also, I can't I'm remember what stage concerned. we are. I'm more concerned that if we take it to town meeting, we're not prepared. It will get voted down, and that sends a terrible message oh, to Mass DRT. So, if we go to town meeting, we go to town meeting fully informed, so that we can make the case to the town, and we actually know what's going on. We don't have enough information. We don't. But on the other hand, this is critical because one of the only ways that you can take land out of um, APR or conservation restriction like the is DCR land domain. is through um, legislative um, action. So if we have to go to Joe Comerford and get in line to work, work through the legislature, we need to do this immediately. ASAP, yeah. So, so we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> yes. So I'm just saying there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, this is where we can go forward and show DOT that we're making good faith effort and put the information and get so that we can collect information and be successful at town meeting. You just, I mean, I would not vote with the information that we have right now in, in support of this. And so how can I make an argument at town meeting that people need to support it other than, oh, we got $23 million project hanging over our heads. Absolutely. But on the other hand, you're making decisions that need them. We might have to go back to town meeting for because they weren't correct. Yeah. You have to have for imminent domain, you have to already have the land surveyed right now. It's six to eight months to get a surveyor out. Mm -hmm. So you, I mean, we can't even do this in my mind, just based on other 
actions that we've done over the years. So I, I don't feel bad talking to Mass DOT and saying, this is what we're doing and this is our timeline. And Carolyn, I, I guess I'm concerned about the, the, um, the, the structural integrity of the bridge as it is now. I mean, it's, it's, it was we have, we have, I think it, it's been, it's been assessed. We have, we have, uh, it, it's yeah, been, yeah, no, but well, even recently, no, the the names, uh, I'm, I'm, the, one of the reasons I was able to get this bridge, um, because it was deteriorated. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 there's different classes and it, and it edged down after Irene, it edged down into the bad class. Okay. So we got on the list. And then there was a whole bunch of bridges that were worse off, and then we got bumped. And so we got back on there. As long as you kept a number, you were in line. And what happened is we did have to do bridge repair because um, I, it was night in 2014 or 16. I can't remember which year. Anyway, um, we did do re bridge repair because of, of we did have uh, more damage. But they do do inspections because this is deteriorated some of the repair work is being undermined and scoured but it is safe and every time we have an event like today when we had high high water the bridge team will come out and recheck and when you have the peers to a certain level then it triggers their inspection again yep. and and i believe today we got up to like 13 um, thousand CFS, which is, if you think about CFS is like a basketball. So you have 13,000 basketballs coming down at together. That, that is a certain level on the peers. Mm -hmm. And, and so that does trigger an inspection. All right. I, you know, whether they're going to be out there tomorrow or not, I don't know. It depends on the, you know, they usually try to get the water to go down a little bit. Okay. Well, um, okay. So, so when is the final dropped a date to know whether this would be taken to the town meeting or not. Town meeting is April 24th. We have to make a decision on this by March 28th. March 28th. Okay. So in the next week or so, if I don't have good information, the board will probably take it off next week. And I get it. I just have to yeah, yeah. let I, I just um, Zachary Fury know that. I just think it's a very worse message to send Mass DOT if we defeat it at town meeting. Oh, God, yeah. Well, so... And I, it's going to be hard to defend imminent domain takings and all that kind of stuff. Shocked. We don't even have, we don't even have the information. I'd be shocked if anyone, you know, so what happens if, you know, the worst case scenario is we don't get it done. Mass DOT is upset with us. They put us on a list 10 years from now and the bridge collapses. Yeah, That'd but the problem is, is it's our bridge. I think it would be probably they're doing a lot of work for us. This is this, this is, is I, why it's critical. This is hundreds of hours of me being a witch. <laughs> Seriously. We we'd probably be in what like a, a Turner's situation okay. where no. we would have like a one lane kind of thing for a couple of years. No, because it was a whole peer. The, it's a okay. oh it is the peers are Can I make a recommendation yeah. that we table this conversation until we get more information. Yeah, because we're just going to sit here and what it. So. Well, <laughs> what I'd like to do is just I I would like to put in a number. I would recommend fifty thousand dollars only because not that it's that it is even accurate, but it will give us some money to work work with to start the legal. Yeah. Um, it's to hire a surveyor. You have to have a surveyor and you're going to have to have lawyers start doing deed researches. And we, and we, what we want to make sure is we trigger the start process. What do we have to do to get DCR's um, property? Um, because that is in conservation restriction and that is, could be a long procedure. So we need enough money to, to go to Lisa Mead, our lawyer, and say, listen, ha start this process. What, what are the steps for taking land out of conservation? Um, we don't even know how much land we're going to take out of conservation, but what's the process and how do we start it? And then, and I mean, that because we, we have to get that going if it because you only are allowed to file bills. The, new, the next session, this session ends um in uh 
just well it's the summer right yeah this summer and then you start a new session so you can file bills so we need to be able to file a bill in this new session and and move that forward if we're going to get action in this in the time frame that d you know d mass dot needs right so i'm not trying to complicate it but i'm just i am nervous about that right off okay so for this capital request then you we'll know, add some... fifty thousand. I'm gonna re. I'm gonna move it around on the schedule, but we'll. I'll put for fifty thousand in, and I just wrote a note to update it. Okay. And, and then, then as we get, as we get more information, we can update the amounts that we are gonna be necessary. Sure. I mean, maybe maybe it's only gonna be eighteen hundred dollars to survey a couple pieces of property, and. But what Maybe. are the access? And I think that this should be for all the costs associated, including acquisition. So if oh, we start yeah. with fifty thousand, it's a place to start. We might have to revise it later. Yeah, yeah. I, I have no idea. So but thanks for just, giving us a number, Carolyn. Yeah, well, it's just I feel like we got to have a reasonable chunk that we yeah. don't have. Maybe don't have to spend all right, but we need to have something to start. Yeah. Cool. That 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 sounds good to me. I mean. Um, a, a title search usually for like a regular properties, you know, six hundred to fifteen hundred dollars just for like a regular house. So, you can only imagine, you know, it's probably going to add up quickly. Same with the, the surveys and plot plans; those are like what five hundred to a thousand usually for a regular household. So, we're we're probably looking at um somewhere in the, in the five digit range. I think, I think that makes sense. Okay. You just have to remember what they want us to do is is both sides of the bridges on both sides of the river. So you got four separate yeah. parcels. And each one of those have four corners at least. And so then, and then, yeah. And I don't know who, you know, what hydro group group owns the two. Yeah. There's two parcels on the on the um west side of, of the river that are I know are hydro properties, but which hydro company? Who knows? And then, and it, and it, and there can, could could be Canadian, so that's an international purchase. And then, um, you know, or it could complicate it. Yep. And then, um, we have a private residence that we want to protect as much as possible. And then we have the complication of a state-owned property that is in conservation. So it it's hugely complicated. For them yeah. to ask us to take care of them. Yeah, I know. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, All right. May I make a motion to, <laughs> to Actually, I just want to, um, if if we're okay on this one, what I wanted to bring up for just two seconds, if everybody's happy, then Casey can load this into the um, schedule. What? Mark asked me to do um, for us last uh, meeting was to look at what was outstanding so that we could put it in the schedule as a best guess. It is totally best guess. This is what we have left. And in total, it is millions of dollars left, but we would be doing it through grants. So what I wanted to say was at my best guess, what would be the town expense? So well, I have- get started, what, just what, what, what's outstanding? You need to explain what outstanding is. Well, well before you that, Denise, if you have to drop oh, it, go for it. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, I just, you know, I'm sort of at the end of my bandwidth. I was wondering, do we have a schedule for our next meetings? Um, no, we, now that we're all here, we should probably okay. do that. Okay. Yeah. But do you want to do, is it okay if we do that first? Uh, and then, and then come back to this? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. I just, I have, another meeting to go to. So oh, you yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. So I just, um, yeah, we can bring yeah. it up next time. I just want Casey to. What are you saying? Outstanding projects? I don't understand what you're talking about in terms of outstanding. The ro it's... Road damages that are long-term still. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's actually, yeah. so just to provide some context here. So what I'm, what I'm trying to do is, have us have a five-year plan and then uh where it makes sense a 20-year plan 
So some of our departments have schedules where they know what kind of purchases and stuff they need to make for up to 20 years ahead of time. So this year, what I'd like to present to the select board and to the finance committee is um, a, a more forward thinking plan than we've had. And we're not going to, we're not going to get there most likely for like this, this next meeting, but I, I want to get it. Um, I want to get it started at least. Right yeah. So, uh, you know, I asked Carolyn if she could put some of those things together because we have all these things all over the place that need to get, uh, worked on. But, uh, anyways, in terms of scheduling, um, this time generally works very well for me, uh, the, the Thursday nights. Um, does that, does that work for everyone else here? Uh, I, I can do next Thursdays. Yeah, I can I, do next Thursday. You can do next Thursday? I can okay. do next Thursday, but after that, it's a little problematic. Yeah, if we can get next Thursday nailed down over email, we can flush out the rest of them. I can, I can, um, I have two meetings on Thursday. Oh, you do? Oh, uh, okay. But I can do five to six. You can do five to six? Yeah, okay. and, and if... And if it's um, 4.30, is anyone's... 4.30 would be tough for me to do. I can definitely start at 5. Um, how, how are you on Five is fine with me. I could do a little bit earlier if needed, but... Okay. Why don't we just start, we can start at 5, then maybe... Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, maybe we could wrap up. Well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get all these things um, updated on on a spreadsheet here, and, and what we can do is go through and start doing our recommendations next time. Okay. Um, we can go over um, the stuff that Carolyn has. We still have uh, a few outstanding capital requests that we need to get more information on. So mm -hmm. those are the, um, there's a the, an open space and recreation committee request. We've got Tritown. And then I think we also still need to do the highway department. Mm -hmm. And then that should finish us off in terms of the information gathering phase. Mm -hmm. And then we can start doing all the recommendations and um uh, putting the plan together for the finance and, and select board joint Excellent. meeting. So, so what I was thinking of just quickly, and if it, if it what? sounds correct. Oh, you go for oh. it, Denise. Yeah. Thank you so okay. much for coming. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just, I'm going to explain this. So if yeah. everybody, if no, we can Carrie talk. and Mark are okay. Yeah, that's, that's actually, then... I'll give you a call so I can find out what you talked about last time. Cause I've got a ton of Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> what, what Mark asked me to do was just kind of a guesstimate of what what the town stake is. So when you get millions of dollars out there, it really truly isn't millions of dollars. And this is how we've handled road damages in the past. So for an example, Hawks Road, the West End, I would put out five years from now, and it's about $60,000, I would say, would be... Um, what we need and we would we would not do it unless we had some extra money storm damage money from the state at some point okay because there's just not enough traffic um foxtown road what we're doing there now might be some significantly enough so we don't have to do any more so that might be off the list right uh because because we're doing some of that in relation to this hawks road repair right now uh, Rice's Ferry Road, approximately three quarters of a mile, maybe a hundred thousand uh, dollars total, and that would be only again uh, if we had extra from the state at some point. Little Metal Road, I would put out about three years from now, and that's roughly three hundred thousand. That would be about twenty percent of a, a one point five million to two million dollar project through the EWP program. Um, and what we would do was we would keep bumping it out until we actually had an event uh, that we could apply for. Yeah. Because <laughs> you have to put your grant, to get that grant, your application has to be in within 60 days. So we have to have some event. Right? It's stable enough. It's a single lane at the moment. Um, County Road and Steam Mill, uh, we are going to do a little bit of culvert repair on Steam Mill. We got permission from... Um, our lawyer to do that, but there's sinkholes and all kinds of problems on steam mill and county road. So we would be applied for 604B in this coming year, and then eventually a 319 um, uh, grant for implementation. 
if we go those ways in the next three or four years, there's no match because of the IRA money. Um, if we can't get enough information or we don't get that grant, we keep having to apply for the planning grant, which is a 604B, um, that would, again, just kick it down. Okay, so no cost related at that point. For Again, likely that's how we would approach that. Old Albany Road from the power line to the Shelburne line, $60,000 roughly extra from the state, not enough traffic. We don't want through traffic anyway um, because, uh, you know, of problems with kids with parties and stuff like that. So we would only do it if we had extra money. River Road, um, we would hopefully be able to get a 604B in the next year or two, then a, a 319 implementation grant. So if this happens in the next three or four years, no match. And that would tell us what to do on River Road and give us some money towards infrastructure repair. If, is, that, is that just in, sorry to interrupt, is that just in general or is there- In general, because okay. we need to find out what's happening. How, why is the river changed? And that's sort of, also addresses the problems on county road, steam mill, and whopping. Okay. Um, so we're going to try to figure out, you know, hire a hydrologist and everything, but there's no match currently. Um, what we would do if we don't get enough money in the 319 grant, which is an implementation grant, then I would put River Road under year four, five, and six, because we have a million dollar cap on um, your mass works projects. And um, so we would need engineering. So we, I would look at 20,000-ish, 20,000-ish, 20,000-ish for year four, five, and six. Um, if we didn't get enough from the 319 or we got some information from the 319-604B approach, um, but it isn't enough to do the actual road repair. The idea is River Road does qualify for Mass Works, but you have to, we would have to hire or front an engineer to do the application. And we would have to split it up because of the million dollar cap. Each of those fixes are more than a million probably, but whatever. So um, we would break it up so that we could afford it. Waitley Road, we're gonna try to do it under the um, current MVP 2.0, there would be sort of a match, but we have enough money from leftover from our 2.0 um, process where we were fronted the money going forward. Um, we were going to work on that culvert uh, that goes over Bloody Brook. And I think it, the Waitley Road one is under $30,000 probably. So that would be could be covered under MVP. And we would probably want to do that in this next FY25. So this Waitley Road one might be the only one that is actually FY25. Um, McCullen Farm Road and Depot Road, uh, we stabilized them and I would put them out in the five, six year timeframe because they're closed now. We only stabilized them. I'm not sure if, if the only programs that we would apply for would be the EWP, which is the 20% match. They're all over a million dollars to do it, but I'm not even sure if we could get the EWP, um, you know, grant because there's just no, not enough traffic. Yeah. Um, you maybe make a case for Depot Road because you could say it's an alternative Alt road. Uh, yeah. evacuation road, just like Little Meadow Road doesn't get any it's stable, it's single lane, but it, it accesses our sewer treatment plant. So those are enough reason to get the EWP program, but McCollum Farm Road, you know, and that might just be permanently closed because I we would never have enough money from the state left over to just to fix it. And truthfully, there's so many other priorities, culverts, everything. If we had that kind of money, we should be putting it somewhere else and not investing it just to open up McCullum Farm Road so kids can have parties on it, you know? It's a tough sell. Yeah. So, I mean, there's some roads that are probably never going to be open, and McCullum Farm Road is going to be one of them, probably. 
I mean, we had to stabilize it. Hopefully we won't have to put any more money into it. But um, on the other hand, what are you going to do? So if you're okay with this, I will give this to Casey so that she can put it in the schedule. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That, that works. Is, is that okay with you, Casey? Yeah. Okay. And great. then um, do you want it identify road for road or do you want it? Um, because that's going to take up a lot of space in the schedule. Yeah. If if you want to get that or, or if you wouldn't mind letting me get a copy of it or something, I can, I can try and mess around with the spreadsheet a little bit and figure out, you know, oh. where to put it. God, I yeah. You know, I handwrite everything because I can't, I can't put them on. Right yeah, now. because we've got four pages now, and the more projects we add, the harder yeah. it is to identify. I'm so. sorry. So, Casey, the only one that would be FY25 would be Waitley Road. Okay. And then everything else. If you have a question, you give me. I I sort of put three year, four year, six year. Okay. All right. All right. It's it's just the first go, but I was trying to explain it. Because I think it needs to be on there. Yeah. Yeah. And that was helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah very, very. All right. Um, and then the last thing that we have here is uh, we do have something uh, on the agenda for public comment. And I, I, I see that we've got one one person here. Does no, no, no one here in person, but one person on the Zoom. If anyone wants to make public comment before we uh, talk about adjourning. Fran, do you have any questions? You're you're always a wonderful person to come and look at what we're talking about. Is Fran able to unmute? Yes, I am. I just couldn't find my tab open. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I don't have any comments. Thank you, though. You're welcome. All right. So does anyone want to chat about anything before we make a motion to adjourn? No, I would make a motion to adjourn. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, Carolyn, aye. Brennan, aye. Thank you. Yep.